convergence of the three rivers on Art Rooney Drive will welcome you to Heinz Field in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. This was the scene just a few moments ago as the Pittsburgh faithful were fired up by the hometown Steelers taking the field. They're all set as they'll match up with the Denver Broncos. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. They'll throw on first down with Roethlisberger. And hitting Juju on the slant. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. First and 10. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. Oh, hit as he throws there, incomplete. Juju Smith-Schuster, the intended receiver that time. And it's second down. Pressure, and that's certainly going to be a key to this game going forward. And that time, they were able to get in there and influence the throw. And remember, quarterbacks got to get rid of it. They don't have the tuck rule that they can fall back on anymore. Second and ten. It's Roethlisberger once more. Back to Smith Schuster. This time complete. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. So a decent gain, but all for naught on the penalty. It's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, the guys who just gave up that play. Now after the holding call, here's second and twenty. To throw here, Roethlisberger. He'll be brought down by the Broncos. It's a sack. The 305-pound defensive end, Jarrell Casey, gets the sack. Well, this is what happens when you get behind the chains, as people like to say, when you have obvious passing situations, hard to vary it up and fool a defense. And you hate those situations if you're an O-lineman, right? Oh, without a doubt, because you just know they're coming, and you never know exactly how. They can be exotic in their blitzes, or their athletic ability just takes over. Ebron caught left side. Only two yards, and it'll be a punt on their opening possession. That's certainly playing down at distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath, by all means. On fourth down, here comes a Steeler punter, Jordan Berry, to kick it away. Denver has Deontay Spencer deep to return. A 40-yard punt, one yard on the return, and the Broncos take over, first down and 10. Now the Broncos offense, they get set to head back onto the field. Lock and the Broncos going to come up first and 10 at their own 42. Off the play fake, he'll set up to throw it. Man open, he's got it complete to Cortland Sutton. And they'll work this down to the 40-yard line, tackled there. This drive starting off on the right foot, 18 yards. Well, that was a fun one to watch right there, a nice in-breaking route and plenty of room in the middle of the field. And he was able to get behind the linebackers and grab the completion for a really good pickup. And now on the pitch, the ball's loose. And it looks like Steeler football. It is. Obviously, you got to hold on to the football, but I've got to give credit to the defense there. Good job of knocking it free. Yeah, because a lot of the time we just blame the offensive players for not taking care of it. How about the effort of the defensive players knowing that guys are going to, and if they're good, anticipate the contact coming and try and cover up the football. And they still find ways to knock it free. Give them 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give them a first down. But one of the ways that quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. 
And they'll let the quarterback keep it here on first and 10. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. It's the all-pro Von Miller who came in to belt him behind the line. With his size, he's a tough man to bring down, but they do a nice job there stopping his progress and not allowing him to get back to the line of scrimmage. Throwing on second and 14, Roethlisberger under pressure, and he will go down. Sacked back at the 46. Von Miller, he was the one getting in there, able to wreak his usual havoc. It's a team game, but sometimes individuals do stand out, don't they? How about that for a twofer? Tackle for loss on the running play on the previous down, and then comes right back and gets a sack. Now Ben on third and long. He'll find Smith-Schuster, that's complete. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. It'll be a gain of eight, but it also lead to a fourth down. What well, we hear so often how tackling has become almost a lost art in the NFL game, but it's so important to tackle well on these receivers, especially in a play like this one. Third down, they gave him the underneath stuff. You gotta go up and make the tackle right away. Barry on to punt as he gets this one away. And well done here. That one will kick out of bounds at about the eight-yard line. The field position game, such an overlooked facet, Charles, of an NFL game, but this offense, they're going to be pinned back. What an ideal punt. An ideal punt, and it leads to that term complimentary football because them doing that puts their defense in a great spot, doesn't it? Gives them a chance. If they want to be aggressive, try and maybe get a safety out of this whole thing, it puts them in that position. On first down, Locke. Got an open man here, and it's K.J. Hamler. And he's going to be brought down on what will be the final play of this first quarter. No score after one on EA Sports. On first and ten, it's Lindsey. Only a couple there, so he'll be brought down about the 28. He was brought down. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground, but I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. Throwing on second and eight. Locke, he's got his big tight end, fan, And only able to get two here. Stopped at the 30. That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. Well, they were unable to make anything really big out of that. But it's not a bad idea to find your tight end and give him an easy completion and keep moving things forward. Almost as bread and butter as a good running back dive play. Throwing his lock on third down. Open man, Hamler, that's complete. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. Just a five-yard pickup, but it leads to fourth down. A short game that doesn't get him the first down brings up a fourth down situation. Really nice job defensively. They knew where the sticks were. They got the stop before. On fourth down, here's Sam Martin on to kick it away. Johnson on the return. It'll be a 39-yard punt four on the return. And the Steelers will go on offense here, first and 10. Pittsburgh set to take over again on offense. They've had it twice. They've punted twice. Not the start they were hoping for. Not at all. And let's face it, every facility we visit, everyone talks about converting on third down, how big that is. In this situation, they've had to punt it away twice. So they're furiously going over things on the sidelines. What do we need to do to pick up a first down and change our momentum? It's Connor as they stay on the ground. Number two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Out of the gun, it's Roethlisberger. That ball caught by the former Toledo Rocket, Deontay Johnson. Complete to Deontay Johnson. It's a gain of seven. Brings up third and one. A 
nickel set defensively for the Broncos here on third down. Trying to get the first with Samuels. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. A third down gain of three yards, and that'll be enough. That's quite a spot there for his first carry of the game, but obviously they had plenty of faith in him, didn't they? No question about it. And here, why not go with the fresh legs? Able to push forward, pick up that first. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. And the Broncos get there and take him down. You never want to give up a sack. From the O-line's perspective, they hate it for several reasons, especially because they felt like they let little brother down back there in the pocket. Oh, no doubt. They have a ton of pride, and they go into every job wanting to keep that guy clean. They want that uniform with no grass stains, no dirt, nothing on it. But it's really, really difficult. You're talking about some terrific athletes who are trying to put him on the ground. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. From the gun, it's Roethlisberger. To the right side to Eric Ebron. That catch good for only a yard, and it'll be third down. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. Third down, it's Connor. And he's going to come up a few yards short. Brought down at the 45. Now the Broncos are going to call the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Here's Jordan Berry now as he's on to punt for Pittsburgh. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Calls for the fair catch, makes the fair catch just inside the 15-yard line. They'll score that a 36-yard punt, and it'll be first and 10 Broncos from deep in their own territory. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. Lock working out of the gun. He'll find Lindsey here. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 15. But not much there, only a yard. All defenses worry that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it can turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. Throwing again on second down. Lock out quickly to Judy. They'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. A nine-yard gain on the play. And it's third down. So plenty of action on the field, but no action right now on the scoreboard, at least as of yet. Nothing, nothing is our score. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach! And this carries into the end zone. And Spencer will elect to not bring it out here. It's a touchback. Lock and the Broncos going to come up first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. He'll start things with a handoff to Lindsey. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. Second and six at the 29-yard line. Second and six, just inside the 30. Faking the give to Lindsey. Here's Locke. He'll let this go deep for Sutton. That's caught inside the 20. And he takes it down deep into Pittsburgh territory. It's a big play there for the Broncos. 55 yards. 
A real field flipper there as all of a sudden they've got a first down in the red zone. Here comes Hamler on the jet sweep. Man, this play gets blown up. They'll lose yardage back at the 17. They'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. As a wide out, when you take that handoff and you're coming around the edge, you're expecting to see nothing but empty space in front of you. But if not... Well, things can go south in a hurry, and that's exactly what we saw in that play with a loss. On second and 11 now. Lock. He completes this to Sutton. And he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. They'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. A field goal would get him the lead, but that's not what they're shooting for as they come up on third down. Throwing now is locked. The Steeler defense locked in, forcing an upcoming fourth down. Well, the other day they told us when we've got third and five or less, we have to be able to convert. And I guess every team would say that, Charles, but an opportunity miss there. What they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point. And they liked some matchups that they had, thought they could exploit them, unable to do so on that play. They'll go for it. It's locked. And he is into the end zone for a Denver touchdown. Drew Locke on target to Jerry Judy as his guys are first onto the scoreboard here this afternoon. Well, these two teams battled through a scoreless first half. Finally, a breakthrough here in quarter number three. And I just wonder how that played for both of them psychologically because when you battle through a scoreless first half, now you know that every possession is increasingly crucial. Who can put points on the board, make the other team chase? Wonder if you get a lift and if they get deflated a little bit. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. Here's Kareth White on the return. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. Time for the Steelers' offense now to get set for their first possession of half number two. And this game was all square at halftime, but now they find themselves down seven following the opening drive touchdown here in the third quarter. And they need to take a good, relaxing, deep breath, don't you think? Because right now they might start to feel like they've got to play catch up here and start matching them point for point, but it's still too early to get there. They can still run their offense, Plenty of time to get back in this game. That'll be taken in there by James Washington. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. An excellent way to start the drive there, 18 yards. A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and 10. Roethlisberger will hand to Connor. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. I see a shake of the head as he gets up, and you've got to imagine he's thinking, guys, you got to help me out. He's hoping his team can read his thoughts because he definitely needs some assistance. On second and 11 now. Roethlisberger, Ebron with it over the middle. And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos 35. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense. And guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, 
and some toughness to go across the middle. You put it all together, you got a heck of a tight end candidate. Give him nine there on the first down completion. At the Broncos, 26-yard line. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. From the gun, a give to Connor. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the red zone here at the 22-yard line. Four yards the pick up, first down. At the 22-yard line. That's the end of the third quarter. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and ten. From the shotgun, it's Roethlisberger. And he's going to be taken down back around the 35-yard line. Vaughn Miller able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. And they went empty backfield, and because of that, nobody was there to pick up the blitz. And you know that offenses, when they go with the empty backfield, they have different things designed on every play to try to account for things. But what people often forget, defense is audible as well. And a lot of times when they see an empty backfield, they audible right into a blitzing situation. He gets it left side to Johnson. Complete. They sure put the coverage guys in a stress on that one. They thought they were going deep. Ends up curling inside for a nice chunk of yardage. The Steelers on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and 11. And a throw there going to be incomplete. They really had a good drive going there, but a nice recovery by the defense these past few downs. Able to knock that one away on third down and bring up what I think for the offense, an unexpected fourth down here. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. He'll have the win at his back here in the fourth quarter. Boswell's kick is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. So an interesting call there to take the three. I and mean, I guess they're thinking that their hands were tied. But, you know, fourth quarter, that field goal might not help them that much in the air. Yeah, eventually they're going to need the touchdown. The thinking must have been they didn't feel confident about picking it up there. Hoping maybe on defense they can get better field position, get a turnover, get a better play. And then they'll have a chance to attack the end zone. Successful field goal try. Here's Boswell to send it away. To return it, here's Deontay Spencer. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. Denver's offense ready to go again. They're holding on right now to that slim advantage in a one-score game. And you hear a lot about two-minute offense and four-minute offense. Obviously, the four-minute offense applies here. How do they run that effectively? Yeah, really what the four-minute offense is is you're just trying to grind the clock. So you want consistent gains, steady gains. Doesn't have to be big plays, but it has to be plays that gets first downs and keeps the ball away from your opponent. But certainly throwing the ball is in the mix here. It certainly is. Just make sure that you're careful with it. And again, get those first downs, keep possession of the football. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders, hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone or... Better against man because now you're running away from someone and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. Now this one complete on the slant route. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. That one, a first down pickup of eight. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. From the gun, it's Locke. 
He's going to hit his man out of the backfield complete. And he goes out of bounds. It looks like right at the 50. Three yards the gain there, second down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers, tight ends, because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Locked with a throw, caught by Hamler. And the ball is knocked out, and it's picked up by the Steelers. And he'll get this one out to the 50 to the midfield strike. Big Ben and the Steelers with a first and 10 right at the 50-yard line. Following the fumble recovery, it's Roethlisberger. Looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. James Washington was the intended target, but it's going to be second down. Got out of the pocket. Didn't look like he had anybody open, Charles, so just gets rid of it. And a good play by him. If no one's open and you don't have a running lane that you want to take, make the right choice. Get rid of it. Live to fight another down. From midfield now, here's Roethlisberger. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. They were looking for Johnson that time, but now it's third down. Well, so far in this drive, they've done some good work. They forced incompletions on first and second down, bring up third and ten. That brings up the big question. Do they bring pressure, or do they play coverage on this down? Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. That one into the hands of his tailback, Samuels. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. That's going to bring up fourth down, only a gain of two there. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. And a nice job here on special teams. This will be down inside the 10 at the 8-yard line. And for an offense that is struggling, this is not where you want to start from. Great punt. Fantastic punt. And for all those who wonder, what do punters do during the course of practice each and every day? The best ones do what we just saw there. Work on positioning the football and helping their team. They'll try and grind some clock with Gordon. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and ten. Lock on the give. It's Lindsey. And he'll take this one up to about the 13. And quickly, we're going to get another stop here with 1.54 left, as they call the timeout defensively. And the Steelers now in the nickel here on third down. Now lock. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. Certainly appeared to take away his first read, and by the time he tried to look elsewhere and find an open target, the coverage was too good. That one falls incomplete. Here's Sam Martin now. And you wonder, could they possibly think about taking a safety here? On the return, Johnson. A nice return there of 11 to help mitigate a good punt. And the Steeler offense, they're set up nicely as they take over. So Big Ben and the Steelers now. Down 7-3, to three, just over a minute, 40 to play. They need a touchdown. A field goal is worthless now as they come up on first and 10. Throwing now is Roethlisberger. And he's got his man out of the backfield. That's complete. We'll give him six on the play, and it'll be second down. Partner, they're clearly saving those timeouts, but they still have to work with some urgency to put themselves in the right position. 
Roethlisberger got to get his guys to the line as quick as he can. Here's Roethlisberger. And that is incomplete here. There have been quite a few plays they might look back on and say, we really have hurt ourselves, and that was another example. And this is late game execution. Everything on the line, so it all has to come together properly. The throw's made. Where's the catch? Got to catch in that spot. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Roethlisberger to throw. Setting up the screen, this is Samuels. Well, this is going to depend on the spot, but it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. Down four late. Got to go for it here on fourth down. They'll try and throw for it with Roethlisberger. But it's brought in by Washington. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. They keep the game alive, at least for the moment, as it's a first down. At the 21-yard line. One crisis averted, but they still need to move hastily. Now it's Roethlisberger. And he's got his man, the tight end, McDonald. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. Three yards the gain there, second down. It didn't check off every box, but the most important one. Got the clock stopped, getting out of bounds. They may be a little short of the first down, but I thought that was the key. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. Back to throw. And hitting Juju on the slant. And the Steelers are going to be looking at first and goal as they move this down to the four-yard line. It's a really nice 15-yard pickup, and now it's first and goal. Now the Steelers are going to use their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with an even 20 seconds left to go. Only way to get the lead here, of course, with a touchdown. And that's what they're gunning for on first and goal. Back to throw. And he's got it. It's caught for a touchdown. And they have taken the lead here in the final seconds. How many people are watching this one right here who gave up? Because that score, they might want to try and rush back into this stadium. <laughs> yeah. Well, it looks like it's going to be the game-deciding score, although a little bit of time left, so you can't count your chickens before they're hatched. Well, they better come back in here and watch this one because you and I, we're not going anywhere. We want to see this one play out. And his kick is right through. It's the score. Steelers 10. Broncos 7. Turn is Spencer. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. And Denver getting set to take the field. What do you do here down like this in this situation? Do you maybe just pick something out of the playbook you haven't called in a while or you call it a day? You can do that or you pick something that's a staple for you and should work better and try and execute that on the way out the door and maybe get back to base and feel a little bit better as you, end a, as you end a ball game, it's been a frustrating one for you. And we'll see if they go back to base. They're throwing to start the drive, but that one incomplete. Philip Lindsay, the intended target. That'll bring up second down. It's now second down 10. Yeah. 
Second and ten now from the 27. To throw his lock. And that is incomplete, stopping the clock with five seconds to go. Cortland Sutton is the man he was looking for, and it's third down. He was covered by Steven Nelson. An important play right here, third and ten. And I would expect pressure here. One final try for Locke. He's going to let it fly. And it's incomplete. So their final drive comes up empty. And with that, the ball game is over. Broncos seven. Well, going into the final play of this game, they knew that they needed some type of a miracle there at the very end, but they couldn't get it done. However, we were treated to really a spectacular affair. Even though they didn't finish it off, you're exactly right. They took us down to the last play. We're still... You were wondering, could it happen? Possibly, even though we both knew it was a long shot. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. The Steelers are winners as we say so long from Heinz Field.